case study breakdown. You're responding to the local elementary school for an eight-year-old with difficulty in breathing. This batch advises you that the nurse has given the child their inhaler, but has had no relief. You find the child sitting upright in that nurse's station, arms extended, elbows locked out, head going back and back arching as they're taking that deep breath. So in that tripoding position with some accessory use, do not have head bob. They're on supplemental oxygen, skin is cool, clammy, with cyanosis to the lips. So with that cool, clammy skin and the cyanosis, we're beginning it into respiratory failure. Heart rate's 118, 82% on that supplemental oxygen. BP is 86 over 50, cool, clammy skin, cap refills brisk, and blood glucose is normal. Okay, so yeah, this is up a little bit. This is down a whole lot. And 86 over 50, that's about as low as we want to go for an eight-year-old. So remember, we take double that age plus 70 is the minimum systolic pressure that we want. So eight-year-old, 16 plus 70, 86. So we're borderline going into a decompensated state of shock, likely due to that respiratory failure and acidosis. As you go in, also take, you hear minimal air movement, you hear wheezing, and the lungs are just diminished bilaterally. You begin a nebulized treatment and you're not noticing any improvement. What would be the best intervention to perform next? Go ahead and give another nebulizer, give some IV steroids, mag sulfate infusion, or an IM injection of epi. So let's kind of break those down. Yeah, we could give all of these. Right, and in some of the socials, yeah, that's what everybody was saying. Well, I would do all of them. But what's the next thing that's likely to help this person? Okay, this child, eight years old. So yeah, a nebulizer treatment of albuterol and atrovent. Yeah, we can most definitely give that. The albuterol aiming to open it up. That anticholergenic of atrovent trying to dry up all those secretions from that inflammation. Great. We've already done this, and it hasn't done anything, so maybe not our best option to go with right now. Mag sulfate, yeah, most definitely. We can give that to help that smooth muscle, the bronchioles stay open, but this is kind of our last step. And remember, this is going as an infusion, so depending on what your protocols are, this is an infusion that needs to be given anywhere from over 20 up to 60 minutes, and it's in kind of those later stages past giving our steroids. Okay, so, Mag sulfate at the end. Okay, so this child is in major distress right now. We're trying to find something to stabilize them right now. Long-term effect, and same thing with the steroids. Most steroids have a longer onset. So we could give IV steroids, but the onset of action, that's gonna be several minutes. And those are several minutes that we may not have to waste with this child that's in respiratory failure. So then we start talking about epi, okay? And of that one milligram and one milliliter, or that epi one to 1,000, this is gonna be a solid go-to in these situations of a child that is in respiratory failure or really anybody in this condition of status asthmaticus. Okay, we're not able to break it with that nebulized medication. And yeah, if we were seeing some marked improvement out of this and it was working okay, yeah, then we could go ahead and do this this is for emergency uses only, which in this instance, not being able to hear really any lung sounds means significant air trapping. They can't exchange any air. So more than likely why that inhaler is not working and why that nebulized medication isn't working because they have an inability to take a deep breath through all the air trapping from extreme bronchospasming. So that epi -IM injection can most definitely go in and break that. Okay, so it has that beta agonist property, so it'll cause a bronchodilation, just like the albuterol will, with a really quick onset. So this is why epi in this situation would be great to give them in the event of status asthmaticus, where the traditional medications of nebulized things aren't working right now. So we think about these things and systematically of their onset of action, and our priorities of where and when we want to give them. But yes, in this, we most definitely could be giving all of these to that patient. Even given that epi, it may open them up, 
but we still have some additional inflammation and um, you know, kind of ronchi in the lungs where albuterol natural vent would be great. Then we could be given the steroids to help those bronchioles stay open and then given that mag sulfate for those bronchial smooth muscles to stay relaxed continually and to prevent the status asthmaticus from reoccurring. So thanks for tuning in as we went through to break down this case study.